Now we complete change of, of direction. Um, we've got a pair of clips coming up, and, and we're going to be exploring for a few minutes psyche, the world of psychiatric nursing and its portrayal in film. Uh, one film most of you probably know very well. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, and it's, it's of course its main protagonist, Nurse Pratchett, who you will see tonight in all her glory. Um, it's it's definitely one. Uh, direction in uh, a portrayal of, of, of nursing in a, in a psychiatric hospital, but it was a, a, perhaps a portrayal of one type of, of nursing care, which was uh, around at one time. And I'm not going to say too much because um, my two cohorts in crime here are going to say a little bit more about that. The second clip uh, is Girl Interrupted, which is uh, features when on the writer and, and Whoopi Goldberg. It's a nice contrast, it's a later film of course, it came out in, in 1999, um, a nice contrast to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in, in terms of, of a totally different type of care. Um, time period wise, I think, portray one set in 67, I guess One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was meant to be mid-70s. Yeah, um, the, the exact time. Um, but very different approach in, in, in uh, how the nurse interrelated with her patient. Um, Certainly, with, in Whoopi Goldberg's case, it was it was a question of tough love. Um, there was a compassion in, in how she related to her patient, but she wasn't going to, to, to take any guff. Um, and and that, that comes up very clearly. The one thing I will comment on in, in terms of one flew over the cuckoo's nest is watch for the cap. There's a heck of a lot of symbolism in, in the nurse's cap in that, and it's a it's a, a very prominent nursing symbol as we've been talking about, and it's it's how it's treated is, um, is particularly poignant in terms of what it means to the nurse um, on screen, to whom, it's, to whom it's done. Now, I introduce you, I, I invite you to whichever one of you wishes okay. to speak first. <laughs> okay. Well, this uh, story won um, five Oscars in 1975, and it won several SAG awards, and the foreign press picked it up as well. It was very popular. The storyline revolves around the day-to-day -day living in a mental hospital, uh, today we're more apt to call it a mental health facility. Uh, one rebel patient, who was played by Jack Nicholson, rallies the other patients to take on the oppressive, unyielding, and inflexible tired head nurse called Ratchet. Don't you think the very sound of her name spells trouble for anybody that gets in her way? Take a good look at Nurse Ratchet's eyes. They exhibit both fear and hatred. Instead of earning the respect of both staff and patients through kindness, she demands it. To force compliance of the ward rules, which were usually made up as she went along and when she saw fit, she takes away privileges and humiliates and threatens patients with a suicide being the result of this inhumane treatment. How different mental health care is today compared to what is seen in this movie. And now patients are integrated into the community with nurses following their progress. And in Canadian hospitals, for sure, patients have input into ward routines and family members are encouraged to be part of the health team. Thank you. Um, and for me, there was a, a personal aspect to this because when this came out in 1975, I was working at North York General Hospital on the psychiatric floor. North York General Hospital is a hospital in Toronto. It was actually almost a district hospital. Don Mills was the, uh, the suburb that we lived in, and that they, uh, we, we went door to door and got $100 from everybody. To, uh, we took the, the community hospital very personally. It was also the first hospital built with a psychiatric component. Up till then, there were the psychiatric hospitals. And there was also the back cellar room or behind the furnace or some place where they got stuck in a general hospital. And they weren't in a general hospital for any more than a, a, in the period when I was at KGH for 10 days. And, and they had to be there to be observed. Then they were transferred to the psych hospital. So this was a, a new thing in nursing and for the care of psychiatric patients. And it was a 78-bed unit, so that was a large unit. And uh, when this movie came out and we saw it, uh, it, it wounded us because I don't know who saw it and what you might remember of it, but the uh, um, ECT, electric convulsive therapy that was given, 
was uh, quite dreadful in this movie. And uh, I hadn't seen that. Uh, we did it here in Kingston when I was in training in the 40s. And at that time, it was only a 10-year-old uh, treatment. And, uh, and it was different, too. But this was so uh, harsh. And uh, it just was, was hurting to a nurse to think that a patient would be put through that. And we didn't do that. <laughs> we didn't, uh, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to compare because uh, I like to think we did it with more compassion on our floor. Um, also, we couldn't believe this happened. And we, I was working with two American nurses who said yes. Yes, that is the way it was done in the United States. And it was basically without patient's consent and, and that type of thing. And that has kind of stayed with me on that level. Um, I think things have improved with medications and, and psychotherapy and things, but uh, it, was, um, it was a fierce treatment in many respects. Um, right now, I... Uh, maybe this is getting too personal, but when um, a patient has suicidal intent, this seems to break the pattern of suicide if a patient is given ECT. And it's not done lightly and it's not done with a great consultation, but it has saved lives in as much as it breaks that intent of the patient's mind. So I would defend it on that basis. Thank you. Thank you, Betty Ann. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Very different, Stevie. State hospitals. This place is a five star hotel. <laughs>